Chairman, members of the commission, again, good afternoon. Um, here to, uh, as requested to just kind of fill in the, the dots and the blanks a little bit as to what happened over the New Year's uh, blizzard. Um, and I guess to sum, sum up a lot of it, uh, in most cases, when we have blizzards, we're so well versed at it with them here in North Dakota, we don't ever have to do what we did to have to do that weekend. Most cases, we, we monitor the blizzard, we staff for it uh, a little heavier, we pull out all every four wheel drive we could find, and we, we respond a, as necessary. And in most cases, there's really not, not an issue. Um, in this case, with this blizzard, uh, it was very different. Um, you know, you, initially it came on fast. I mean, I think everybody predicted we knew that it was coming at, but when it hit, it hit hard. Uh, and the visibility went from from what it was in a matter of a couple of hours to nothing. Uh, then you throw in a 100 car pile, 100 vehicle pile up on uh, on uh, I-94. And keep in mind when we say 100 cars, we don't mean 100 cars were actually piled up and in wreckage. Uh, there was probably 35 to 40 separate crashes, and 100 cars got trapped in it, uh, or up to about 100. And then you throw in we had a 20 car also out on Cast 10 uh, near Mapleton at the same time. And then you take away all of our visibility and you take away the, the ability to, to move real well. Uh, it made very quickly, um, things started there escalating. Were, there were at times we had, at uh, one point we had to do a rescue of a, of a mother and her three children over just south of Fargo a little ways. And the time frame that it took for our guys to get down to, from here to Cass 46, uh, was three hours. And, and yeah, it was, I mean, you're talking 15 minute drive most days, if that. Uh, so that tells you the conditions. Our people were basically going off the mileposts with their guide, and uh, we uh, we saw some pretty interesting things. But that that's just that was kind of our environment. But we felt well in control of it uh, compared to chasing it because of the fact that we were in a command center and we were all there making decisions based on the needs and the priorities. And, and rescues were decided that way. Around dark, uh, the, the North Dakota Highway Patrol pretty much decided we're, we're beyond having to, we're, we're, we can't keep into this investigation mode. We concurred, it's time, we've got to get these people out of here. A lot of people had just, you know, kind of bailed out of their vehicles, ran down the ditch early on, got into vehicles on the frontage roads. So we had vehicles just there. I mean, we couldn't get around them, we couldn't get through them. Uh, it, it got very tough. You had a lot of people trapped. So we tried to communicate through snowmobile teams that we deployed. We'd have our, our teams go out and try to go in vehicle to vehicle. We had one individual having a very serious medical We got to him with the snowmobiles and a snowplow, got him to uh, medical assistance uh, in Mapleton. I believe we got to either Mapleton or Castleton is where we, we were able to, to get him to. We did a number of escorts in. We had a very serious uh, medical condition that a woman was having in Castleton. We escorted the ambulance back to Fargo. Uh, with that. So on top of everything else we had happening, we had all our normal law enforcement stuff happening. The medical assist, we had a, uh, people get trapped in a house together in weather and they don't like each other very much. The domestic disputes start. So we had to deal with those as well as everything else. So we were felt pretty well in control of everything. Uh, once it got to the point where we knew we needed to get in there with a rescue plan, we planned a rescue, we staffed it, we briefed it out at the highway department and we deployed our people out jointly, uh, county and state, uh, and went vehicle to vehicle and were able to get everybody extracted out and everybody back safely. Uh, unfortunately, early on in the incident, we did have one fatality that was right as the crash had begun. Uh, there was a good Samaritan stepped out of his vehicle to try to help people and was, was hit by a semi. Uh, and a few days later, he succumbed to his injuries and, and passed away. We feel very blessed that we didn't have a lot more of that. And in this day and age of, of technology, I think one of the biggest assists for us was cell phones. Uh, I try to imagine when I look at, and I'm sure these guys will back this up, when you look at the number of people that we had stranded all over the place, had we not had cell phones to be able to find them or them to call and tell us where we were at, that first day after would have been quite an event as we were trying to just go from road to road to road to try to find stranded people because they were everywhere. Um, throughout the next couple days, you know, we had evaluated closing the talk a number of times. Uh, it just, it just, we knew initially we thought we were going to run through six o'clock on Friday. That quickly turned into noon on Saturday, which quickly between noon and six, which quickly turned into sometime Sunday morning. And I believe about 10 a.m., uh, Sergeant Tollison, the chief deputy, shut it down and we were able to kind of go back to normal operation. And, and we had higher staffing levels, but we were able to go back to normal operation. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Sheriff, one of the things that I had a hard time to understand was was the timing with respect to the 100-car pileup. I believe that that occurred before noon, 
like maybe 10 o'clock in the morning or so that I heard about it. And um, there must have been there must have been a point at which you were you you thought that you would be able to clear the scene, and when when it, you realized that that wasn't possible, that then you decided to to rescue the people. But when those people were were still out there at eight o'clock in the night, um, I was just a little confused about because you know that's only about two miles from the highway department, and and there's there's I know that there's vehicles and traffic going back and forth. How how come those people were stranded out there for so long? Uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioner Paul, a lot of it, I guess, would fall back on the investigation of the Highway Patrol as they tried to initially wrap their hands around this thing. It had happened. You're right. It happened before I had even been notified of what was going on. Uh, as I respond in, I'm getting a phone call. Hey, they're thinking this thing is just amping up. People are. It was just basically trying to control. You know, so many cars at that time of day. Nobody. I think everybody just kept kind of piling into the thing. And as they're trying to bring, you know, in most cases, there's maybe four or five troopers out in the entire region. As they're trying to respond to this thing, and again, it kept just cranking up on them and amping up on them. And what they're trying to do is piece together. Once we got it shut down and protected the scenes, they were trying to systematically go down and, and piece together what happened. But then you have people leaving their vehicles. You have people not staying there. They were trying to come to the crash, work the crash, and get them out of there. And so they had would shut down the area. They put our people at each end. They had their own people. At that point, we're securing the scene, and they're doing their investigations. But it just finally got to the point where... The investigation end of it's just going to have to happen down the road. It's probably not going to be perfect. They're probably not going to be able to put it together like they would, but you have a fatality scene. They had to make sure that they had done everything they could to investigate that, that conditions allowed, on top of methodically working their way around. Okay, whose car is this? Who's, where was it put into? It just starts eating away at time. And that's as I started seeing what's happened, as I got in here about 1 o'clock, so I realized that we got we got to get a hold of this, and that's why the talk. That's why at some point, you know, it wasn't quite 8 o'clock. I mean, we were closing in on probably 435, 53 when we're like, the investigation done. We got to start getting these people out of here. But it was just trying to organize the people, getting over to the highway department, doing this so we didn't lose people, so we didn't lose somebody out in the storm. And keep in mind, there's a whole bunch of different events all going on at the same time while this is happening, so we wanted to methodically do that. Initially, as we started the rescue, the troopers called back in, hey, we think we can get a big chunk of 20 out of here. Just hold on before while we get these guys turned around and out of here. We don't want you coming into this. Well, we're trying to get them out because we were bringing people back against, against the travel ride. They, they were westbound 94. We're bringing them eastbound on it. So we just tried to do everything very methodically, very safely, and that, that takes time. By We had made the decision to do that well before 8 o'clock at night. It was probably um, just as it was starting to get dark. Uh, we realize we can't, investigation's just going to have to take care of itself, and there might not be answers to some of these. Uh, we got to get people out of here. And then you have to.